In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on glycolysis by going over the payoff phase. In the last video, we discussed the preparatory phase of glycolysis, steps one through five, where glucose was broken down into two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and two molecules of ATP were invested in this process. In this diagram, you can see the summary diagram of the payoff phase of glycolysis. Steps 6 through 10, where the two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate are processed to form two molecules of pyruvate. And in these five steps, we're also going to form four molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADH. The net result of all 10 steps of glycolysis then is to convert glucose into two molecules of pyruvate and also to form two molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADH. So now let's go through each of these steps. So step six, the first step of the payoff phase, is the oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now, there's something important you should recognize here, and that is anytime we're looking at an oxidation or a reduction reaction, it always has to come in pairs. All right, these are redox reactions, so if something gets oxidized, something also has to be reduced. So in this diagram, you can see how glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized and an inorganic phosphate molecule is added. And this results in the formation of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And at the same time, NAD plus is reduced to NADH. So essentially, you can say here that electrons were transferred from glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to NAD plus. That's the redox reaction. This reaction is also catalyzed by glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. And the dehydrogenase should make sense with its name because dehydrogenase means this is an enzyme that's going to remove hydrogens, and removing hydrogens is an oxidation reaction. So it fits the description. Step seven is the transfer of a phosphate group from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate so as you can see in this diagram, what happens in this step is that one of the phosphate groups from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is transferred to ADP to form ATP and 3-phosphoglycerate. In this case, we are forming a molecule of ATP. And this process of ATP formation is what is called substrate level phosphorylation. And this is to distinguish from the other method of forming ATP, which is dependent on respiration. And that's ATP formation with the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. So this is substrate level phosphorylation. And since we're transferring a phosphate group from one molecule to another, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to ADP, the enzyme catalyzing this reaction has to be a kinase enzyme. So this is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate kinase. Step eight is the conversion of 3-phosphoglycerate to 2-phosphoglycerate. As you can see in this diagram, it's pretty straightforward. Essentially, the phosphate group on the C3 position of 3-phosphoglycerate is moved to the C2 position, and that results in 2-phosphoglycerate. This reaction is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate mutase. In step nine, we have the dehydration of 2-phosphoglycerate. Dehydration means the removal of water. So you can see in this diagram how water is removed from 2-phosphoglycerate to form phosphoenol pyruvate. And this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme enolase. And finally, in our last step, we have phosphate group transfer from phosphoenol pyruvate. And this is another irreversible step, meaning that it's an exergonic reaction that releases energy. The reason why we've been emphasizing these irreversible steps, the three of them in glycolysis, is because in subsequent videos, we're going to talk about gluconeogenesis, which in many ways is the reverse process of glycolysis. And most of the steps in glycolysis are pretty easy to reverse, but these irreversible steps, because they're exergonic, are more difficult to reverse. So we'll see later on how gluconeogenesis is able to run the reverse processes. So in this diagram, you can see what happens in step 10. Essentially, the phosphate group from phosphoenolpyruvate 
is transferred to ADP, and that results in the formation of ATP and pyruvate. Again, we have the formation of another ATP molecule, and since this doesn't require the electron transport chain or ATP synthase, this is also called substrate level phosphorylation. And again, since we're transferring a phosphate group from one molecule to another, this enzyme is called pyruvate kinase. All right, so these are the five steps in the payoff phase of glycolysis. We can see how overall the two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate are transformed into two molecules of pyruvate. For each of these molecules, we produce two ATP and one NADH molecule. But since we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to begin with, the overall process of the payoff phase is to produce four ATP molecules and two NADH molecules. In the next video, we'll summarize the results of both phases of glycolysis and discuss the net products produced.